Thanks to the Internet, views of movie critics nationwide are being forged into a single critical mass. Jim Axelrod shows us how it's done. You've got seven different screens, and they're each playing a slice of one movie. If the artwork in the lobby of this California tech company doesn't tip you off... I'm confused. It's a movie screen. Yeah, it's a movie screen. Take a walk so, down the hall. So this room is called Casablanca. So we'll have a 3 o'clock in the Casablanca room? Exactly. Let's go. Who wants to go first? Yay. Still wonder what they do here? Our top movies are Black Panther and it's just Black Panther. <laughs> then try a few minutes at the morning meeting. Let's do it. Thanks. Yeah. Right. Welcome to the headquarters of Rotten Tomatoes. Even as the entertainment industry gathers tonight to see which of this year's films the Academy thought best. Don't worry, I won't win. Let's go, kids. This company may be reshaping the way we go to the movies and how we choose what we see. Without a Rotten Tomatoes, I as an individual, I, I guess I'd have to go read 100 reviews. Right. So people kind Paul Yanover is say, the president oh, of Fandango, the, the online ticket company that acquired Rotten Tomatoes two years ago. Perfect marriage here of a technology company and an entertainment company. More than a third of moviegoers now make checking Rotten Tomatoes the last thing they do before buying a ticket. The site aggregates dozens of reviews curated from thousands of company-approved critics and calculates the percentage that are positive. We're democratizing that research and then we're democratizing access to it through the internet. Jeff Voris is a vice president at Rotten Tomatoes. A curator will go find a review, put it in the system, and then read it to determine is it fresh or rotten. If they're not sure, then our process is we send it to three other curators on the team who all read it independently. If there's real uncertainty, we'll go to the source and say, you're not being clear. Are you recommending this movie or are you not? Right. The world is changing. Here's how that works. If 75% or more of the critics post positive reviews, it is your time. Like 97% did with Black Panther, the movie is certified fresh. Woo! Let's go! 60 to 74 on the tomato meter, like Beauty and the Beast with 71, only gets you a fresh. What you're trying to avoid as a filmmaker is a number <laughs> under 60. That gets a rotten thrown at it. Seriously? Seriously. Fifty Shades Freed, for instance, had a tomato meter score of 12. You own this? We own this. This is Siskel and Ebert for the digital age. Yep, absolutely. It's expensive. Uh, Ethan Teitelman works for the National Research Group, a polling firm that tracks industry trends. You have studios as clients. How wigged out are the studios by Rotten Tomatoes? I think they're scared because it's still that shortcut. And you can agree or disagree with their reviewer, but really nothing beats seeing that score at the end to know, yep, I'm, I want to spend my money or I don't want to spend my money on this movie. Our team is the elite of the elite. And that's exactly what spooks the studios. The idea their marketing machines may not be as able to overcome bad reviews in the age of Rotten Tomatoes. Michael Linton is the former CEO of Sony Entertainment. Rotten Tomatoes came on the scene, and it wasn't the voice of individual reviewers that mattered. It was a collective voice of Rotten Tomatoes. I do know people pay a lot of attention to it, and I do think it does have an effect on how a movie opens, and it certainly has an effect on what the legs of a picture are. Perhaps that's why director Martin Scorsese recently called Rotten Tomatoes hostile to serious filmmakers in a column for The Hollywood Reporter. They rate a picture the way you'd rate a horse at the racetrack, he wrote, they have everything to do with the movie business and absolutely nothing to do with either the creation or the intelligent viewing of film. Rotten Tomatoes, at the end of the day, net positive? I, <laughs> I'm a little closer to the negative side. You might want to see it for Daniel Day-Lewis's performance. On a Hollywood soundstage, we caught up with Claudia Puig, the president of the Los Angeles Film Critics Association. It's a very oversimplified system fresh, rotten, and there's a lot more nuance in film criticism. There's a lot more nuance in people's appreciation of film. I wish that there were more categories, that there was, you know, a slightly overcooked tomato, a slightly raw tomato, you know. There's Even with her more. issues with Rotten Tomatoes, Puig is still one of their top reviewers. It seems there's no disputing Rotten Tomatoes' influence these days. 
certainly studios are thinking, how are we going to reach the largest amount of people? How are we going to make the most money? And to do so, that in this day and age... you got to get a good score on Rotten Tomatoes. Do you dispute the notion that Rotten Tomatoes is now almost achieved make or break status for movies being released? I think that's too strong a statement. I don't think it's make or break. We don't think that at all. We, we believe that, if anything, we help shine a light often on uh, films and TV shows that you might not know a lot about otherwise. I guess the school of thought there is, if you want to make a successful movie now, you've got to thread this Rotten Tomatoes needle. Do the movie makers, the producers, the studios, do they have a point? I look at it this way. Right now, there are nine Oscar-nominated movies. I believe every single one, for Best Picture, I think every single one of them is certified, certified fresh. fresh.